So Jim, I wanted to start talking about the uh, identity issue, which has become a bigger deal, both the sort of the expectations um, of buyers to target effectively, and of course, how things are changing uh, with cookies and IDFA and so forth. So uh, from a DSP standpoint, from uh, the standpoint of Media Math, uh, how do you provide identity solutions broadly to your, your buy side customers? So I think that there's a lot of noise and some of it legitimate, some just fear around what's happening with identities. And I think it's going to make the industry better. And one of the things that we've came on board with as a strategy a while ago and now recently executing against is a more open identity architecture, meaning we have an identity uh, solution and a graph as our competitors do. However, we believe the future is getting out of the syncing game and really transacting on uh, as close to first party signals as you can. And this industry uh, globally, certainly, let alone locally, will have different players that win in certain areas. And we believe that you know, a handful, maybe up to 10 to 12 over time, will be the identity players in the industry that uh, agencies and advertisers are working with. And so our view of our open identity is the ability to transact on those identity signals uh, that the supply side is using and the demand side is using. So on one side, uh, the advertiser and or the agency is transacting on certain first party signals that are coming in. And those same first party signals are out here on the supply side. And how do we sync those, not sync through those, but actually transact on those. And that's the difference of what we're focused on and also how we believe that that's the winning decision in the market. So tell us a little bit about working with agencies and uh, how they leverage first party data or utilize first party data from their clients, uh, which is terribly important and how that sort of fits into the uh, DSP scenario. So I think it's interesting as an agency, you almost have to be hybrid and open as well, meaning some brands will make a decision, you know, a, uh, you know, a retail brand has made a decision on a certain identity signal that they want to use, that they want to make their first party data to be together with. That could be different than a CPG customer also of, a, of an agency. So at the same time, they have to be open because a brand needs to be able to um, you know, dictate where they want to. And at the same time, where a brand maybe isn't dictating or they need to have an offering, different agencies are coming up with their own identity approach. Some are more open framework, 100% and some have an open framework uh, like I just talked about where you can have a preferred activation platform that has it. And also some of them are building out their own identity solutions as well. And they are effectively, uh, you know, handling the uh, customer's data through their identity themselves uh, so that they can provide that to brands that don't want to make those choices. So again, hybrid choices is what's really open for them. And some, there's two or three that are making their own identity where a brand wants it. And there's two or three that are completely open on frameworks uh, and ask the client to decide. Now, Jim, tell us about your conversations with the media agencies during this uh, lockdown time, uh, strange times, uh, what their demands are, expectations are uh, around programmatic. And as a follow-up to that, uh, what are some organizational changes you're seeing in terms of um, media management? So I think on the first of the two questions, you know, it really has been, uh, as a lot of folks have said in the industry, it's been a uh, dynamic since the middle of March or early March. Uh, we are seeing a new normal come about for now, certainly pre-vaccine and well into the pandemic, where uh, we saw a lot of, um, you know, preference go towards digital and programmatic and the inability to uh, deal with a decent amount of sellers uh, and sellers certainly for upfront money for uh, that would be put forth over a year because things are changing. So we've seen certainly digital becoming more important. Uh, we've seen certain digital channels take a, a big hit during the pandemic as well and the, some, of the, you know, the, some of the social channels. And so all of that together has seen there be just more choice so agencies providing brands more choice. And that choice, luckily for us and others, it seems to be a lot more digital and where we can provide trusted, safe, quality inventory that shows where, that, where their money is going, why that's the best path to put it there. That trust and flexibility seems to be much more important. And agencies are working that through with their clients every day 
uh, I would say in Q2, much more dynamic, almost daily, weekly. And now in uh, most companies, third quarters, uh, while it's still very dynamic, it may not be changing by day or by week. Uh, however, people are also saying it may change by month and based on the results. And uh, it's just been nice to see those activities. On the second question around media management and working that through, it's interesting. Uh, the just depends on channels. So audio and connected advanced TV and display or uh, mobile can all be slightly different. However, overall, the ability to curate uh, media and supply either uh, at an agency, in a region, in a country uh, that they think is the most performant and or bespoke for a very large brand. And the ability to curate that uh, content, maybe not as 100% of the spend digitally and programmatically, but really doing that to be more performant. And performant could be anything from price, lower price. It could be higher price as long as that's tied to the strategy and the KPIs of the advertiser. So all boats rise, both the uh, supplier side of this as well as the advertiser. And showing that similar to identity, it's and the move to digital more and more in the pandemic, how can you do it in a trusted way? So the advertiser's gaining, the publisher's gaining, and sometimes it goes this way, sometimes a little this way, but in doing that in a way and curating part of the spend, and again, in a transparent way uh, for the advertiser. And finally, what do you think the needs are of the agencies for DSP? I mean, it's certainly changed over the years, but uh, you know, how do you see their expectations changing? How do you guys need to change? And how is that relationship evolving? Yeah, I think it has evolved over the last, geez, maybe if you think about it around mid-teen, so, so 13, 14, 15, trading desks were uh, an entity. Trading desks were the client of the DSP. And from that time till now, that's transformed to some extent uh, in some cases, there's very much outcomes makes models by the agency, or effectively the DSP, just like supply is, is the client is the agency. And because they are putting either money at risk or they're doing uh, uh, outcomes for a brand, keeping it simple for the brands that want it or part of brands. And so that part's very much still the agency is the client. The, what we see more and more every year is the agency is actually a partner. And that partner could be a brand has made a decision to own their contract with a DSP. And that's probably the one third of the in-housing that we see is yes, the agency is still doing their strategy and planning, um, helping them choose their programmatic partner or partners at the brand. And then the agency servicing them um, and really managing the DSP as part of everything else. Uh, or it may go, uh, the brand doesn't matter how it's contracted. However, they want a voice. They want to understand it. They want a relationship with the DSP or DSPs. So the change there and the transformation over the last two to three years is uh, the agency is a partner of the DSP company. And together, uh, they're triangulating with the brand in some level of in-housing or just pure transparency and wanting to have a seat at the table and what happens.